I'll, I'll be fair. I think the, the way global themes have been handled actually has been really good. There's been a couple of people I've seen being kind of pedantic about the certain things with the store. Uh, but okay, so it sounds like we're talking about global themes. Let's go into We can do that. Themes. Yeah, sure. I, as yeah, said, let's, I don't let's, care. Let's, let's go global themes. Um, <laughs> do you want to give a recap of what happened from your perspective? Okay, sure. Um, so the way I understand it is global themes aren't really themes. Global themes are a sort of general package for styling and modifying Plasma, which include things like Plasma themes, icon themes, wallpapers, all of which are generally safe, and assuming someone doesn't like bundle something weird with it, which I'm minus saying is they can with Pling. That's what I, I heard from Nate, at least. Yeah, so, um, so um, to back up why we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A user, in, a user installed a global theme, or from my perspective, an add-on sure. from, uh, from the KD store, which is a third-party website-ish, but it's under KD brand. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that as well. Operated yeah. by Pling. Um, and it got some content. It wasn't designed to be malicious. And I don't want to um, go too much into specifics of calling it particular author out but no I, um, I, from my understanding it was just a dev who used a plasma 5 plasmoid he didn't realize that in certain situations it can lead to an empty string uh being yeah. set it doesn't seem like it's malicious yeah no uh but a user's home directory got lost which right. is pretty bad things could be worse i mean could be a more security issue but uh it brings up the conversation there about well, hold on, what's happening with the KD store and content in it? Mm -hmm. And this isn't a new topic. For, I mean, we've been talking for years about how the stuff in the store is not sandboxed. Uh, in fact, all through December and January, mm -hmm. we had one of these security researchers coming up to us and saying, oh, plasmoids can run arbitrary code. And our response, you know, and I was one of these people who was like, well, yeah, we know. Here's his his uh, API for it. There's documentation of right. how to do exactly this. My understanding, um, correct me if I'm wrong here. My understanding is internally, it's been fully aware that this is how it's worked for a long time. It's just not being communicated to the public in the most clear way. Yeah, I mean, I think when you're on the inside, you just have this hat of, oh, this is how it works. That's always how it works. Right, right. And with global themes, especially, we've had a situation where it started off as being about bundling uh, code for your lock screen and um, all these other very core system things. And it was like, well, that's as core as it gets. It's clearly, clearly uh, designed of needs to come from trusted sources. Therefore, it doesn't matter if anything else happens. And then more and more stuff got piled in and piled in and piled in and piled in. Right. And that was fine. But because more stuff got piled in, that messaging changed on top. I was like, oh, well, this is a convenient way to set up all of my applets in the way I want them out of the box. And there was a little UI tool to take your configuration and save it into a global theme so you can get a new laptop and restore everything back to how it was. So it's a very conscious effort to allow everything. Mm -hmm. And then users started liking that and wanted to share their stuff that they've made and curated together. And then the messaging changed around what it was because people were using it for this new thing. Mm -hmm. So this is very, just a very slow, gradual, things changed over time and not everything caught up. I mean, KDE is this very old project. This KDE store it used to be kd-look.org and it's at least 15 years Wait, old. hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, so you had a yeah. different domain that was not on the KD domain? Yeah, yeah. so it was okay. run independently. Um, oh, really okay. Set, set up by I mean, how most things get set up. Some person who likes KD mm -hmm. uh, goes and, oh, I'm going to create this website to curate all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And there used to be two. It was kd-look.org mm -hmm. and kd-app.org. Right. And I mean, this is the days before flat packs and snaps and when anything by a long, long way. Mm -hmm. And KD Apps had all of the binary content that you download and compile yourself and 
type dot slash configure because that was the way things were back in the day. <laughs> KD look had the graphical assets. There was no confusion. That's how things were nicely split. KD apps faded away over time because there were new ways to get apps now, mm-hmm. which generally better. No, pe- no people aren't just compiling things by hand all of the time. KD looks uh, came around. That sort of split off into gnomelook.org, XFC look, and all these spin-off websites, which so on some of those have died anyway because they've got new replacements to come about. I don't right. think anybody uses gnomelook.org. And KD wanted to sort of bring it under our umbrella. Um, we've got a domain name, Redirect. And it stayed... Uh, I don't know who hosts it. I don't know the details of all of this sort of thing. It might be us, might still be third party. But, you know, it became part of store.kd.org. Right. Well, what I do know with the store is, um, I believe Nate is listed as one of the moderators. Um, He's everywhere. uh, Give me a second. Uh, Yes, Nate is on. I don't know how actively. I know he deleted the, um, the recent, like, plugin. So he definitely gets involved there sometimes, but I don't know if he's, like, checking it frequently or just so, going there when yeah. someone tells him that something needs to be removed. Yeah. So, so I mean, there's a channel where you can reach out and just tell people. Mm-hmm. And normally, it's spam just being uploaded. And right, right, right. It, 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 it was a, lot of, a load of reviews. Some stuff doesn't make it anywhere. Uh, it's normally a lot of comments, which are just telling people to buy drugs on the internet uh, <laughs> rather than content. Right. So... It's at any website, it gets filled with gibberish. Mm-hmm. And it needs moderation, which is time consuming. And people do review stuff. Stuff does get taken down. Mm-hmm. So that part's not abnormal. In fact, it's a st- you have a website, bad stuff can get on it. Absolutely, yeah. And there's a lot of things on there. We had a check. Uh, There's 30,000 items on, on uh, store.kd.org, which is mostly just anime wallpapers. <laughs> but if you ignore those 29,000, um, there's, there's, there's quite a lot of content. So nobody wants to you know, just chuck that away because yeah, good stuff on there. Yeah, so... One of the issues I brought up in my video is the fact that it's on store.kd.org. Because it's on that domain, it looks a lot more official than it otherwise like is is treated by the project. Like the from my understanding, the store is treated as like this this outside thing. Like we have it on our domain. Like it's the store that you sh- like you generally go to, but it's not something that the KD project is like actively moderating or anything like that. And like, I, I think having it on the official KDE domain does make it seem a lot more, like, official than it otherwise should be treated. I think the A... Well, the AUR does the same thing. It's on the official Arch domain, but they have a big, bold disclaimer at the top of the page that's like, use at your own risk. Don't be stupid. Right. Yeah, uh, and the fact that you've got content and add-ons that can do stuff isn't weird. I mean, no extensions can do anything. Sure. Inkscape extensions can do anything. GIMP extensions, you can download and they do well, anything. GIMP is just Python. Right, exactly. You know, in Python, you import OS, <laughs> OS, whatever. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. All of these things are absolutely exist and people do good stuff with them. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that, then you end up with this first party and third party system uh, where what we do is privileged and special, but you can't compete. And it is important to allow people to, well, I'm going to bank my own network configuration applet and they can build that up. Um, maybe talk to IWD instead of network manager or something. They can build it up independently. Users can use it. And then at some point we could say, well, you know what, we'll swap that out. Um, I mean, that's happened in the past. Mm-hmm. So it's important to have this open level playing field. Mm-mm. But, you know, there's challenges that come with it. I think if you don't have some sort of official means, you end up encouraging users down like a much worse route because what will happen is the plugins will still exist, but they'll be on GitHub <laughs> repos and you might have people that are like, oh, install it with curl pipe into bash, which 
is not a good... I, I, I'm doing a video on this soon. Like, people need to stop recommending this is a good idea. <laughs> Just please download the script first, look at it, and then do it. Like, even if the developer's not trying to be malicious with a, uh, a download method like that, if the download breaks in the middle of the download, you might have a script where you have a malformed RM command, and that could end up deleting parts of your system and you don't want that to happen just download the file check it then run it very simple <laughs> yep i mean i was about to say oh you should have a podcast um yeah imagine that yes <laughs> you can't stop i got so distracted by by my um and i think actually it's one of the problems is us main devs weren't using a store for some of our content I think if okay. we'd used to store more, we would have taken more care about it. Right. Whereas, because right now, your core devs, when they want to make a plasmoid for something abnormal, we've got this one repo of KD plasma add ons um, where we ship stuff that we don't want in the core because it's a bit too. It, it's extra stuff like a desktop cube. Nobody needs a desktop cube. It's in this extra repository where you can go and get it. Mm. But almost all your distribution that goes gets given to users for your distribution channels, your regular Pac-Man, Debian stuff. So we stop caring about the store mm-hmm. as main developers, and I think that's actually part of the problem that we need to use the stuff that we want other users to use. 